しいな。Coco had been in a good mood ever since practice ended. About what? いろいろ。I just randomly just thinking of an idea for another other mystery that just purposely to scare the crap out of Coco. Coco, did you know there's a mystery in the school involving a late bass player? A, a late bass player? Yes. It's said that at night you can hear a faint bass, and if you approach the sound where it comes from, it suddenly stops, and then it suddenly becomes louder, but from behind you. And if you turn around fast enough, there's nothing there. But then you feel a hand on your shoulder. Woo! I know it's not really. Overly special one, but that's just making up on the spot here. If I had time to think about it, I could do more with that. I don't get it. <laughs> okay. Um, that's more of an answer than a hint. I don't get it. I guess it was just going to be with the whole gang for New Year's Eve.、Mm, the whole gang? By the way, Coco.、Uh, what are Anzu and Akane doing? They had been a part of our usual group, but I hadn't seen them for a while. They haven't even come up in conversation. It's like they've ditched this plot and gone on a skiing trip or something. About what? Till they prevent me. I don't think they even mentioned the Anakas route, did it? What? They went skiing? Where? Because did they? I'm not sure. I can't really remember if they actually came with them the previous time or not. Mustn't have been. But it was quite some time ago. And who went with them? Wait, so Suginami is like, oh, I'm going to like.、Uh, Give you ideas for this, and then I'm gonna bugger off. I do it every time, all the time as well, don't I? I couldn't believe it. Those bastards! They didn't even ask me to go. They could have if you had chosen the right decisions, but they didn't. So let me get this straight. Suginami suggested that we hold this test of courage tonight, and he's not even going to be there. Damn it, Suginami! Why? And they're spending their New Year's Eve at a ski resort. Pretty fancy. I wonder how. I mean, imagine if we could like have it from Suginami's perspective. What if Yoshiki, Koko, and Wataru and Nanaka didn't go on a skiing trip with them, and you see it from Suginami's perspective? Now that would be different. You know what? There should be a spin-off with Suginami's protagonist. Yeah, yeah, give Suginami some love in this. Just like he's the one who gets the girls. Just like change of main character. He'll probably not be as dense, but it'll probably be a case where, well, actually, I don't know how that would work. He's not interested in anything, really, is he? He's just like, I'm interested in.、Uh, Folklore, mysteries, and all kinds of stuff like that probably、I、have no time for love, but it would have an interesting twist, though, wouldn't it? They didn't ask you to come too. Yeah, that didn't stop you the other times, though. Oh, really? I only would have gone if you'd been there to teach me. Oh yeah, I do. Back in February. 
I remember that our class went to the mainland for a ski trip, but I didn't get to go because I was sick. Why was that? Well, you did kind of give up on it pretty quickly. <laughs> so you gave up and watched them the whole time? Wasn't that trip like three days and four nights long? What did you do the rest of the time? And they were all destroyed by skiers! Bastards! <laughs> I tried to imagine Coco making snowmen by herself and started laughing. Now the funny thing is that she's doing this on a skiing resort, so there'd be a bunch of skiers going down the hill, just looking at this one girl making snowmen, just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> it's a freaking snowman. It's like, how did you get into this accident on a skiing resort? Was it a tree? No, it was a snowman. What the hell is a snowman doing there? Some girl just decided to make loads of snowmen. I think she was making an army or something. Twenty-eight. Were they all in a row, like at the bottom of a slope? Everybody, here are the pins. Knock them down, but they'll knock us out. Oh yeah. Okay, here's a challenge. Try to avoid them. They're all there. We've got to maneuver around them, so beginners are kind of screwed. Too bad it's on a beginner slope as well. Ah, shit. <laughs> Stop it, it's hilarious. Sorry, sorry, I can't stop laughing when I imagine that. I'd totally help out that. I'd be like, ah, screw the skiing, it's Bill Snowman. I see, I guess you made a good decision not to go. Man, that was funny. Too bad we didn't actually get to see it. What, me? I'm pretty good at skiing. I wasn't lying. When I was little, I used to travel a lot with Sakura-san and Junichi-san. Junichi-san taught me how to ski. <laughs> One of these days, I'll get to go on a ski trip and all the girls will go crazy for my mad skills. You've been on two already, Yoshiki. They didn't go completely mad for you at all. They were just drawn to you because they could not believe how dense someone could possibly be. Huh? I was only kidding, but she took me seriously. He can't ski with shit. But neither can I. Neither can you. Wataru? I guess the girls went crazy for him too, just in a completely different way. <laughs> I think someone told me about that. Did that help make a even bigger snowman for you? Paintings of hell? Giant snowman? That doesn't add up. <laughs> well, you were making the snowman family, right? <laughs> ah, just hearing about it makes me want to go skiing. Yeah, but I guess you don't really like skiing, right? Okay, I'll teach you then. Coco stopped and looked at me in surprise. Sure, what? What are you so surprised about? Yeah, I'll drill you hard until you can ski like a pro. God damn my dirty mind. <laughs> Ow. 
we could ask for Tara and Anza too. Skin's more fun in a group. Well, that's what would happen, Yoshiki, on the other two routes. Huh? What did you say? Sure, it's a date. I didn't know when we'd get a chance to go, but I felt the idea away in a corner of my mind. You know, I don't think that Yume and Otome will, like, involve the band, obviously, in the skiing trip. So, I think the previous route with Vanzu was the last time we get to see that ski trip, I guess. Later, we hit up a convenience store to buy snacks for later that night. One moment. An hour and fifteen minutes. I guess we got some time for some more. Uh, you have to go somewhere now? She's always... Sorry, I didn't let you finish your line properly. She's always going places and we don't know... Well, you know some of you viewers do, but I don't. And I will continue to not know until we get to that plot point. When are you coming back? She was as busy as always. Bang on time, my free friend showed up for dinner. They each brought a visiting gift. Sakura-san waved at us and left the house. We all lined up to see her off before heading back inside to eat. You're a weirdo, Wataru. He likes calling people weirdos, doesn't he? Yet he does not realize that he is himself also weird. But then, the realization that everyone is weird in one way or another to some person. Koko and Anaka handed me their gifts. They had brought a selection of snacks, drinks, and cakes. Wataru gave Otne a huge flower bouquet. What the hell? We all winced a little as Otne sturdily accepted the flowers. After that, we chilled for a while in the house. We had originally been discussing going to the shrine before midnight, but we decided to ring in the new year and our house instead. With that, we set up the table for the feast. Otne and I had cooked everything together. We let you may be in charge of tasting. She said everything was good, but then she wasn't exactly a reliable source. I figured it was probably okay, though. Okay. Kirk and Anaka came into the kitchen. I'm just picturing an alternative kind of version of this scene. Well, when it is like really, 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 really protective of the kitchen, like that was nobody in there, and as soon as it's just like, is there anything we can do? Get out of my kitchen! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Calm down! Whoa! 
<laughs> that would be a lot different. Yeah, you shouldn't have go into the kitchen, guys. Uh, she only lets certain people in the kitchen. She kind of goes all yandere mode when all the people come into the kitchen. It's pretty damn scary. <laughs> Scarier than the seven mystery thing. <laughs> and they did a great job. <laughs> I can only make simple things though. Like toast. Oh, and his specialty jam on toast. I wish she wouldn't compliment me so much. I felt shy. It was odd to see Nanaka and Atme so in tune with each other. They linked hands and nodded in perfect agreement. Atme boasted joyfully. Ah, uh, what is it, Yume? <laughs> Motaro is peeking out from behind a pillar, glaring at us reproachfully. Loser. Just like, they just seem like such douchebags to some of these characters. Well, they all can be such douchebags to each other. Is that what friends are like, really? Gotta be douchey to each other every now and then. Although, in Yoshiki's case, he seems to. He's like, okay, I'll just like playful kind of uh, teasing when it comes to the girls, but nothing more than that. With his other friends, male friends, though, he's like, comes across as a bit of an ass. <laughs> There's a program, a documentary about insects. Coco and Nanaka just do what he said so he'll stop whining. Hi. They chuckled and went back to the living room to keep him out of our way. Soup's on! My head! It's balancing, see? Ah! Hotne placed dish after dish onto the katatsu. Boiled vegetables, salad, and proteins. She even made some nice appetizers. <laughs> Don't drool on it now. <laughs> yes, we did. We felt proud of ourselves. I was that an Australian accent I just randomly went into there? Why do I always do things like that? It's just I keep going into various different accents. It's just like, imagine if I talk this way in general to people. They'd just be like, where are you from? Uh, Wales. Don't sound it. You sound like you come from all over the world with all these accents you keep using. But no, I just kind of talk like this when I'm just talking to people. I don't actually go into silly voices or kind of accents like, uh... You know, like, uh, just put on accents, I don't even know what the bloody hell accents I'm doing sometimes, it's like, it could be, I don't, I don't even know, I can't identify half the accents I do, you know, it's just like, I just like go into accents just randomly and it just makes no of sense. And right beside us was Yume for some smile. I know, it sounded like a mix between Irish and Scottish. Goku whooped her face in horror because she knew how terrible Yume's cooking was. The other two had no idea. Don't worry, Yume only tasted, uh, only taste tested. She didn't actually cook anything here. <laughs> you know, this is her closed eyes glare. The I'm going to kill you later, face. You may glare at me with a smile that would scare the dead. Oh shit. 
I'd rather not end the year in a body cast. Or a casket. I needed to change the subject. Oh, that, uh, that's nothing. Anyway, uh, eat up before it gets cold. We passed around plates of food and canned drinks. You know what would be stupid? Is if they were having ice cream, just like, better eat it before it gets cold. Oh, Yoshiyuki, you didn't really just do that, did you? Oh, 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 sorry, I thought we were eating something else. I didn't realize we were eating ice cream. And my bad. We laughed and chatted as we ate. <laughs> I'm honored. Me neither. What the hell do they do on idol shows anyway? If you don't want to lose, you shouldn't compete. You know, I shit you not when I say this, I haven't actually sat down and properly watched TV in years. Anytime I like see the TV on in, in say, just like anywhere, and it's like adverts on and it's like this is what they have on TV nowadays, is just see the adverts. I don't even see adverts much on the internet because of ad blocker. And just like, when I see them, just like, yep. Still as weird as ever. <laughs> Wataru prostrated himself before Nanaka. We laughed at his exaggerated reactions. Ten minutes later, Wataru was hooked on the company special. He didn't even remember to ask about changing the channel during the commercial. <laughs> Too bad we don't get to hear these jokes. They know all these things except his name! The salad was all gone. But there was more in the refrigerator. I'll go get some more salad. Um, oh, there it is. Yeah, do we have any more? We brought an all round of canned drinks out to the table. We also brought some fresh glasses. We placed them on the table one by one. Yeah, and the night's just getting started. That's right. We still had the shrine visit and the test of courage. We were going to send off the old year in style. Here's some more salad. <laughs> We're gonna end the new year with style! Here's some more salad! What a line to come right after that! Yeah, that's style, alright! Look at the style I put this salad in, it's totally... It's just... Extravagant, amazing, great, fantastic, and just... It's... Nice. What is it, a skit? Ah. We watch TV for a little while just having fun. Now all I've been doing these days when it comes to watching stuff is pretty much comedy. Just like Lee Evans, Eddie Izzard, Dave Allen, things like that. Dave Allen did a lot of kind of skit kind of comedy. 
There's like religious sketches and things like that and other various random ones, but he also just like sit down and tell jokes and my god he's a master of that. Much better storyteller than I could ever be as well. It's just like his monologue on curiosity, that would he, he definitely just from that alone shows if he was to come up with a mystery for this school, he could totally do it and scare the crap out of you and then make you laugh your ass off at the end of it. It's weird how he did that, I mean, it really is, he'd tell like this really scary story and then the end of it, it's not scary, it's funny. I don't know how the hell he did it. By the time the yellow and white song battle was on, all the food was gone. Also ate some New Year's soba. I was glad that everyone was full and satisfied after all our hard work. <laughs> Coco and Anaka retreated to the kitchen where they cleaned up all the plates and pans for us. Such helpful girls. But then Yume went to the kitchen after them in order to prepare the snacks. They told me to sit and relax, so I settled in to watch the song battle with Vitaro. It's my manly duty to root for White Team. I'd never actually watched a Yellow and White song battle before, and neither had I. I usually watch the fighting shows or the variety shows on a different channel. But it really was an old show. Having the women and my man compete seemed really old fashioned. I think good songs are good no matter what gender sings them. <laughs> Koko and Anaka finished their cleaning and came back into the room. <laughs> they lined the table with an array of sweets. Anaka's cakes were there too. We started talking and laughing again as we went through the pastries. At last, the temple bell began to ring. Boom, 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 boom. Oh shit, it fell! We heard it on the TV at least. They were showing live footage from some temple or another. The sound of the bell echoed through it. We heard the sound over and over again. At last, the moment came. Come in! Otara and Anaka pulled party poppers. Have a great new year, you guys! We exchanged the traditional New Year's greetings. My throat there, what the hell? It always seems like that, isn't it? Happy New Year! But it's like, it's either Happy New Year, hope it was as good as the last one, or it's like, Happy New Year, hope it's better than the shitty one last year. <laughs> That's pretty much me. Just like, last year sucked, this year better be better. And so far, it hasn't been. <laughs> Just crap. I mean, the highlight of this year, I've like, mostly kind of enjoyed like, making random music videos in that uh, Vocaloid game. That's pretty much the highlight of the year so far for me. That and I suppose improving on my guitar I suppose and then it was time to go to the shrine next time. So see you next time viewers. See you next time.